Okay, so I heard that you s started out rapping uh, in the beginning and that singing was like a secondary option for you. Uh, so uh, could you go back to, to those times when you were starting out in the early 2000s uh, oh, wow. uh, in Spanish Harlem trying yeah, to be a, yeah. an MC and singer? I mean, it was um, definitely, um, it was cool. It was a different time and I was like so much younger. So I had this little tomboy thing with me. I thought I was really tough. I mean, I'm still a tough girl, but at that time it was like no holes barred. Like I was rapping and beating people up and it was like really edgy and tough. You know, it was completely different than what I do now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and was it like... Um motivated by, by the surroundings yeah mostly def yeah definitely motivated by the surroundings you know i mean I, I i'm from new york i'm not gonna say it's the hardest place because that's that's what i know so it wasn't really you know but we definitely you know you get into fights and problems and things like that and people are very aggressive in new york mm -hmm. you know so um and that was like the way to be like you're doing music like the tougher you are it's like better you know, at that time. So I just definitely clinged on to the hardcore rap music back then, you know, and um, the more edgy stuff. So, um, yeah, it, it was it's completely 360. <laughs> yeah, completely different world. Yeah, when I listen to the stuff now that I used to do because I started recording, mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> it's, like, it's so, like, I, I mean, I guess I'm just growing up now. I know better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, and uh, what was like the defining moment that, that made you really change your whole style up like that? Well, I was still um, rapping this way even when I did the Never Leave You record, you know? Um, but once Never Leave You became um, like a hit, a big record, and people gravitated to it, I knew that it, it was two di completely different styles, you know? Mm -hmm. And me being a writer, I was able to do all these things because they're different emotions. Sometimes I yeah. feel sweet and I'm I'm in love with somebody, but then I want to beat somebody up, you know? So these are natural feelings that and people maybe feel. Even the same person. <laughs> and maybe even the same person, <laughs> exactly. So it, it all um, made sense, but I know in the music world, it's almost like they always want to put you in a box and make mm -hmm. you choose what is your style and what is, you know? So that was something that. I was kind of challenged with. And I, at the time, it happened so fast with the Never Leave You record, so I didn't really have too much time to choose. So mm -hmm. we just kind of grabbed the songs that I had and made that into the album, the, my first album. Mm -hmm. You know, and Was there any pressure, pressure from the label uh, to, to make you sing more or rap more in um, one or the other way? I'll be honest, with the label, um, Never Leave You became such a big record on its own, independently, that when the label started calling, they're like, we'll take whatever you have. Mm -hmm because we just want to put this record out. So it really wasn't no focus on really building the album or um, there was no um, artist development or anything. I was just this girl who was writing these songs. These were the first songs I've ever recorded. And that was, is what became my album, mm -hmm. you know? And that's what the world got to hear. There's gr a girl in progress, right. you know, like learning herself and figuring things out. So. Um, I, I definitely feel that I, I, I am more seasoned now, but then it was so raw that there's there's something that I feel like I, I do sometimes want to recapture that mm -hmm. because all the things were just so raw and emotional and you wasn't worried about what people were thinking because you didn't even know they were going to hear it yet. Right. You know? Yeah. And you were also uh, you were only 18 years old when Never Leave You came out. Yes. Uh, so looking back from time's perspective, yes. uh, what are some of the things that you, you can say you, were, uh, you definitely wasn't ready for back then? Oof. None of it. <laughs> none of it. I wasn't um, I, I wasn't ready for none of it. I didn't know what to expect. You know, I, I was a fan of music my whole life and artists and people. And I would look at it and it's like, I really want to do that. But um, we only, on the outside, you look at the good stuff. You're not really looking at everything that could go wrong or the pressure the of it. Side. Yeah, and the business side. And um, things just change really quickly. You, I wasn't ready for how people were going to start treating me and how people were going to change, even the people I knew. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I, I wasn't ready for um, just the, the 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 negativity, you know, and the um, and even the and even the um, the the fans too. I, I, none of it, none of it. I wasn't prepared for any of it. But I, to tell you the truth, I wouldn't have it any other way. Mm -hmm. It happened the way it did for a reason. It was very innocent, you know. It was very um, organic. Yeah pure nothing was forced it was a record that was really rough raw you know people always say it was out of key it was off key. you know it was just it was what it was and it worked mm 
mm-hmm. you know? And then um, everything from there, I've always, you know, in, in the years to come, I've developed my skill and I've gotten way better. But it was, you know, in front of the world. Like, I, I've made all my mm-hmm. mistakes. Yeah, you know. And uh, how do you remember working with Buster Rhymes and Fabulous oh. uh, on the remix uh, and the, the yeah. shooting the video? And yeah. what was the most special part of this whole process? I mean, just being able to work with them, because uh, like I tell you, at that point it was so brand new. I was still a fan. I didn't have a major deal, and they called to get on the record. They called like, "What is this record?" And so that was so like overwhelming to me. Like I cried, <laughs> you know. Like my tears came down. Like what? They want to be on this record? Like I, it was crazy to me. So it was a lot of a, a lot of all of a sudden things, like a lot at once to take in. But um, I'd say the best moment was I was at the radio doing an interview and we were talking about the record and Fab called up and said, "This is my favorite record." When I go to the club and I hear this, it's like, you know, it changes my whole mood. And I asked them to play it again and play it again. Like I love this record. You know, I would love to be on it. And I'm like what like and i'm like i love your record too you know like i was just so yeah and and buster rhymes called the radio station asking them what was the record and he was looking for me because he wow. wanted to get on the record so we just made it happen you know mm-hmm. and it was it was just a blessing you know mm-hmm. and uh, how would you compare like uh, coming up in new york back then and now because uh f- from what you're saying never leave you really uh, blew up that much because it, it started out uh, being popular on, on black parties or yeah, in the clubs, exactly. uh, yeah, radios yeah. and yeah. how is it right now now i tell you it was so different is um it's what's different in the world the online impact like the social media and all these things that, that there was none of that back then mm-hmm. yeah we had the internet but it was like people had emails and didn't even know how to use it <laughs> yeah, yeah you know true. it was very still a foreign thing it was very you know but now it's like everyone is doing this and trying to do this and putting their stuff out and um there's so much music out there there's so much artists there's so much people so it's um it's it's like oversaturated it's just too much Mm -hmm. so it's definitely a a different game i don't know if never leave you was you know had it been the other way around i don't know if it would have worked now it it worked then because the time and what it was and it's just like some of the things that come out now would have not worked then Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm not saying that the music is better per se or or worse. It's just it's that the, it's a different time and and the way people want um information so fast and things just move so fast and and it's songs people are dropping songs back to back before people had to wait for albums. Yeah. Now it's like yeah, an and, and you it. and you waiting for an interview to come out in a magazine four yeah. months later <laughs> after you do it. Now it's like you go to your Twitter and you say everything you feel right away. So it, it's so different. Um. And I, I couldn't, I couldn't imagine it being the same, you mm-hmm. know. I couldn't. Okay, and it seems like you're still heavily connected to the underground New York hip hop yes, scene yeah. because you've worked with uh, Nas Protege, Davies, yes, uh, yes. also Big Pun, San Chris Rivers, yeah. oh, uh, okay. Bodega yes. Bams, yes, yes, and definitely. also um, Chang's Drugs, yeah, rest, in rest in peace. So, um, how do you manage to to stay on track like that? Yeah. And uh, which of those experiences was the most unique to you? Wow, um, I'm glad you brought that up. That's very unexpected. That's dope. <laughs> you know your stuff. That's crazy. Um, for me, it is important because these are people who are on the grind, and you see them grinding, and you see them coming up. So, um, actually, um, obviously, you know, Chinks. Now that he's passed away, I feel like, um, you know, he's like now he's a legend. You know, he he was om- he was there, almost about to make it, and um. My experience with, with him was dope. You know, we did the video, and after um, we did the video, we went out to eat. Mm-hmm. You know, um, we went to the crab house, got lobster and all this stuff, and I went to pay. He's like, no, I told you to come eat. No, nobody's paying. And he was a real funny guy, had so much energy. You know, um, we had a good time on the video shoot. He came late, very late. <laughs> he came late. I was waiting for him, but when he showed up, he was ready. You know, he showed up ready to go, and... um. And he added so much to the video, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, rest in peace to him. And I think we did such a great record. Whether it got the um, attention that it needed, hey, who knows? It may get it years later, yeah. you know. You but know. we did it. And I'm, I'm just so honored that to have a record mm-hmm. with him, you know. Um, with, with Bams, um, Bams was, it, it was so dope. Because ba- um, Bodega Bams is from Spanish Harlem also, mm-hmm. you know, like me. So it was like 
I feel like um, and one thing my manager, I, I, I have to give him credit. He's like, you should be working with anybody who comes out from Spanish Harlem, you know, because that is your brand. Like you're the queen of Spanish Harlem. This is yeah. your brand. Like, and I was like, I agree, but I didn't think of it. Sometimes you don't want to like reach out. not that you don't want to reach out to people but you're like they're doing their thing i don't want to mm -hmm. i don't know if they want to do a record with me and then it's like yeah like you know because i represent spanish harlem so much everywhere that i go you know so um it just made sense to do a record with bams and he was like he he was so um he had so much great energy on the set he was smiling he was joking he was jumping around um and it was really organic we mm -hmm. had nothing planned out for the video that we did we were just and in the it came out great. Yeah. And there was no plan at all. We were like, we're going to meet up in this area and everything came together. We found a garage that had mm. 30 bikes in it <laughs> and they were like, yeah, you could drive the bikes. We rode the bikes around, you know, like um, we found that there was a ran random people jumping in, uh -huh. dancing. So it was just like everything just worked out beautifully, you know, and it was that was another organic thing. You mm -hmm. know, there was no set, no nothing. And um, for um, you said, ba oh, they with Chris uh, and uh, Chris and Rivers, Chris, Chris, yeah. that I mean, that that's an honor. I just obviously he's big pun son, but he's making his own way, yeah. you know. And he doesn't um, he try like he definitely doesn't use that as um, a way to come up. He's you know he's definitely branding himself, and mm -hmm. it's like yeah you know I'm big pun son, but I was you know I, I barely even knew him. I was a kid, you know. Yeah. It's my dad, but this is what I do. This is what I'm bringing to the table, and um, he's dope, and he's such a positive kid. And you see him like this big aggressive guy, but then when you speak to him, you're like, oh my god, he's so nice, <laughs> you know? Like he's a really, he's a really good kid. And um, once I, when I got the verse for him, it was from a mixtape. I didn't even know it was coming, cause I know we spoke about it, but I didn't know that my manager actually sent him the okay. beat, and the mixtape was dropping the next day. Mm -hmm. So I had the pressure of having to drop a verse after him, and he <laughs> killed the verse. Yeah. He bodied it. So I was like, oh my god, I gotta come up with something <laughs> right away. So it, it, it was it was just so dope. And we shot it in the Bronx, you know, he's from the Bronx, so it definitely that was dope. And um up to now, Dave East, he's like he, he's killing New York right now. You know, people are um it, it Dave East is like the top of it right now. He's he's bringing that New York feel back. Mm -hmm. You know, he's so dope. His energy he's also is mixing dope. mixing it with, with the new school elements. So exactly. It's, like it's both, like both worlds. Exactly. It's like that old sound that you loved about old mm -hmm. hip hop, but then it's the new sound. In, he's in mixing the new it. Age. Exactly. In the new age with the whole new swag and everything, yeah. you know? So, um, yeah. I mean, and he's also from the East Side. He's also from where I'm also from. So it's like, let's do this. And he was with it and he blessed me with a dope verse. He came through for the video and um yeah we got a we got a dope video we did some dope things and he's moving on to doing great things too you know yeah. so i mean yeah I, i'm just excited and i'm blessed that people actually because these people could have actually not wanted to do records mm -hmm. with me everybody's like yeah let's do it and i think everybody that we, i've worked with we've had a great we've done dope videos we had dope tracks that you know people could go back and even if they don't see it now they'll see it later and it's something that i'm proud of mm -hmm. you know yeah. Okay, and then for for the people that really lost track with your career somewhere yeah. in the two thousands, yeah. and what would you say were were like the highlights uh, of your career after after that? Uh, never leave th you. Th that never leave you, and also the second album because yeah. uh, the last years were a bit more quiet. Yeah, yeah, uh, so yeah. Uh, if you were to say what people should catch up on, what they should catch up on. Well, I mean, I definitely dropped you know little singles here and there, things online, mixtapes and stuff, and I would say. I, I really feel like I really put in um, the work that I wanted to do in 2014 and on. Mm -hmm. From 2014 and on, like I have done things in between that, but the stuff I'm most proud of is from 2014 and on. Like I was just like, I want to do the music I want to do. You know, I want to, like whether it's hit material or not, like I want to do things that I connect to and that I want to listen to. So dropping the mixtape and then dropping all these singles and working with these different artists, mm -hmm. fresh new artists, you know. Um, Fresh energy. Yeah, fresh energy, new, and they're, like, not tainted by the game yet. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Right. So it's, like, that's what I always look to because that's what I feel like. I can't say I've done my best work, but it's when I wasn't worried about anything. I was mm -hmm. just doing what I love. It wasn't a job yet. So it's, like, back to the organic style. Exactly. Like Going back the to pure. the pureness of it, yeah. you know, just doing what you love to do. So I, I say I, I would love people to look up my um, 
2014, the mixtape, the Lumi mixtape, and um, all the singles and everything after that up to now, you know? Mm-hmm. And um, check out all the videos. I did a video to absolutely everything on the mixtape. You know, I gave people visuals. And um, yeah, in 2013 was the highlight. Also, we had the dance remix with Fat Man Scoop that did really well. Um, and I was like touring overseas and stuff like that. So that was a good moment for me also. Mm-hmm. You know? Okay, and, and last question. Uh, d- what do you have in plans for, for this year? And do you maybe think of expanding into art uh, besides music as well, Dif- different areas? Yes, definitely. I mean, right now what I'm, I'm planning to, I want to write more. I want to write for people, for other people. You know, um, I have a passion for writing music, you know, um, and just getting in the studio with different people and um, different voices, people who have these great, huge voices. I feel like I could write songs for these people and see how they come out you know because I, I some i write some things that i you know really can't present the way that i would mm-hmm. like to but there's people who can just sing the shit out of these things right. and kill them you know so i definitely want to work with other people write for other artists um on the on the production side and things like that and um get into some acting a little bit mm-hmm. and doing the videos for the mixtape and stuff i i caught the little acting bug You know, so I I definitely, um, and it's something I've always looked at since I was young, but now I feel like I've done, not, I'm not going to say done enough because I always want to do more. There's always more to learn and more to, you know, to do, but, um, I I definitely want to look into the acting. Exactly. Yeah. I'm ready to go in. Yeah. I'm ready to take the time out for other things now, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so uh, thank you very much for the interview. Oh, it was a pleasure. Thank you. It was a dope interview. High <laughs> five. You. No, high five. <laughs> no. Okay. okay.